Jonah chapter 2. He's in the belly of the fish. Then Jonah prayed unto the Lord, his God, out of the fish belly. What's it say? I was almost fooled one time with all these documentaries that, oh, man can live in the nasal cavity of a whale. He can live in this part of the whale and all that. Uh, I almost fell for it because the Bible says belly, stomach. Jonah did not stay in no nasal cavity. When science tries to disprove the Bible, disprove them and then throw that stuff out. He's in the fish's belly. Starting to be digested. We'll see that. We're going to read this chapter slow. And said, now this is Jonah speaking. I cried by reason of my affliction. He's not happy. Unto the Lord. And he heard me. Out of the belly of hell cried I. So 117 says he's in the belly of the fish. 2 1 says he's in the fish's belly. 2 2 says he's in the belly of hell. A fish's belly is likened to hell. You know how do you get you know how do you get into hell? Your body has to die. He's not living. He's dead. Now, I've had two churches where someone's got up and said that Jonah never died. And God heard him pray. Do men pray and speak in hell? What did Jesus tell you about the rich man? He could speak. He could see. He could feel. He could remember his family. So why can't Jonah in his death in hell cry out to God? Now this is a type of the Lord Jesus Christ of three days and three nights. And thou, God, hearest my voice. Luke 16, 7. They talk in hell. For thou hast cast me into the deep. Liar. Why is he blaming God? The seaman did it. Chapter 1, verse 11. It was his idea. Chapter 1, Chapter 1, verse 15. Okay, 15, they threw him in. In one twelve. it was his idea, remember? And he's blaming God. God, you threw me. No, 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 no. It was your idea. The seaman did it after praying to God. You didn't have to say throw me in the river. Maybe you just got down your hands and knees and got right with God. Maybe God would have would, done something else. You are where you are because you opened up your big mouth without asking God anything. Remember Joshua when he had these people of the land come to him, pretending to be somebody who they're not, and they didn't seek God at all? And it became a burden to them? Read all the places in the Bible where they do not seek God. Ask many Christians who have signed documents of official papers that have not prayed about it to God and see what happens. In the midst of the seas, and the floods compassed me about the waters. All thy billows, that's great waves, and thy waves pass over me. So he's in the storm, he's in the deeps, he's in the water. Then I said, Jonah speaking, I am cast out of thy sight. But one of the places in Psalms says you can't go anywhere without God seeing you. And one of the places speaks about you, even though you go down to hell, there I am. You can't escape God. 
Yet I will look again toward thy holy temple. He's looking forward to the resurrection. With his part here, you got Acts 13, 25, Psalm 16, 10, Matthew 12, 38 to 40, and 1 Peter 3, 18 and 19. The waters compass me about, even to the soul. He drowned. The death closed me round about. He became surrounded by water. He could not breathe air. He is not a fish. You know what that's called? It's called drowning. The weeds were wrapped about my head. When Jesus died, he didn't have weeds upon his head. He had thorns. I went down to the bottoms of the mountains. How's a whale going to take him that far? He went into the literal hell. The earth with her bars. Matthew 16, 18. Revelation 1, 18. 1 Peter 3, 18. Remember what Jesus said about bars and the earth and underneath our feet? The gates of hell. So somewhere down underneath our feet, there's a gate that has bars. And I don't think Peter's there. Bars was about me forever. Jonah has been placed into hell by drowning forever on the wrong side of the bars. And it can't be his body because his body is, is now being whale food. It's being digested. And we're going to see that in a minute. Yet hast thou brought up my life, resurrection, Hebrews 5, 7, Psalms 22, verses 1, 2, and 4. From corruption, John 11, 39, Acts 2, 25, and verse 30. Remember what Martha said? He's thinking. He's reeking. That corruption, you know what it is? The body's decaying. He's going through death. His body, he's being dissolved in the juices of the stomach. You know why Jesus did not seek corruption? Because he's not being digested in a whale's stomach. Jonah would have, his body would have lasted four or five days before it started reeking. But it's already starting breaking down with the asses in that stomach. Rigor Morris is now setting in. He's dead. If you make Jonah alive, and he is verse 17, the type of three days and three nights, you go along with the idiots and the liars that say, well, Jesus wasn't really dead. As soon as he hit that, that cold rock slab, he came back and became, became conscious because he was unconscious. Really? And you miss the fact is that Jesus Christ went into hell too. That's sacrilegion, isn't it? Where else is he going to put my sins? It's where sins go, don't they? I could give you the name of the churches and the dates I got recorded that they say to this guy, but I won't do it. He's dead. Oh, Lord, my God. And that's a great title of a hymn. Oh, Lord, my God. When my soul fainted 
within me. Now you see where they get the idea? Oh, he was just unconscious. Okay, I'll give you the unconscious if you're talking about the flesh. But that eternal being of you? I don't think your soul faints. And you get the little ammonia package to wake it back up. He could have used any word, body, soul, spirit, flesh, but he uses the word soul. The eternalness of him that lives forever, either heaven or hell. Or for the New Test I mean for the Old Testament Jew would have been Abraham's bosom until Christ made the sacrifice. But he's not over with Abraham. He doesn't say anything about Abraham. He says in hell. I am something worse than a fish's belly. I'm in the belly of hell. I remembered the Lord. Go seek that rich guy. What he remembered. He remembers, I forget how many brothers he's had. And he wants somebody to go witness to him. And my prayer came in unto thee, into thy holy temple. Now, if he's, I'm not sure if he's listening just to Jonah's prayer. Or if he hears everyone in hell. I don't know. One thing I do know, Jonah is praying, verse 1, and God is listening. I am not going to step out on a limb to say God hears everyone in hell. I don't have the scripture for that. I know the rich man that Jesus speaks about is speaking to Abraham. It's not speaking to God. And Abraham's gone now. It's a big void there. But I do know he hears Jonah. And he seems to have Jonah is the only one that can do what he wants for whatever reason. I don't know. But God shows this man a bunch of mercy. By the time we see the close of this book, that ends with a question. Jonah is never happy. They that observe lying vanities forsake thy own mercy. I don't know why he threw that in there. Except for the part blaming God for him being in the water. He told the sailors exactly what happened. And they said he told them the story. And it looks like he told the story when he bought the tickets. But it says in Revelation that all liars will have their part which in the fire or the lake of fire which burneth forever. Wouldn't it be interesting if and we know hell has compartments. We know that hell has degrees when you study the Bible. Wouldn't it be funny that there's a liar's hell? Adultery hell? Proclaiming to be God hell? Disrespecting Jesus Christ? Wouldn't it be that that's... Lying veins forsake their own mercy. Not God's mercy. Their own mercy. So it was brought up my life from corruption, verse 6. That's the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Now, are you going to tell me that Jesus Christ never died? Excuse me. Let me, let, let's see. Let, let me. Christ died for our sins. But Jonah didn't die. Okay. Christ was buried according to the scriptures. But Jonah well, he's in the whale. Okay, I think that is a berry. And Christ arose the third day according to the scriptures. That's the gospel. And we're going to read by this at the end of this chapter. Jonah's out. 
And Jesus said, as Jonah was three days and three nights in the whale's or belly, so shall the heart, so shall the soul of the Son of Man be in the, in the heart of the earth. So if he's telling you that he's going to be like the prophet Jonah, either Jesus passed out or Jesus died. Who are you going to believe? A bunch of idiot men? Or are you going to believe Paul, the apostle of the Lord Jesus Christ? I'll take Paul in the gospel, thank you very much. Now, if you go around preaching the gospel of Jonah by the religious people, you're going to believe in a Savior that never died, was buried, hit the cold slab. Boy, I feel good now. And if Jesus Christ did not die, if he didn't die... He never went into hell to deposit your sins. So see, see how dangerous it is? And if he never died, he never resurrected. He just came out. Jesus just went into a nose cavity of a whale. I don't think so. And you got to bring this logic with the Bible that people are trying. They, they think they sound so smart. They think they sound so great in science, so falsely called. There, I almost fell for it. All the documentaries about Jonah and the whale. To prove everything that Jonah stayed alive and when you study the Bible, he died. And to be amazed that I know two churches that have had out of their pulpit. Someone come up and say that Jonah didn't die. And come right out and say it. And they're still in those churches today. I think that's blasphemy. Stop talking about other religions. But. I will. Sacrifice unto thee with the voice of thanksgiving. In everything give thanks. Wouldn't it be weird if you have to thank God in hell? I will pay that that I have vowed. Well, give the man a lot of credit. He vowed something. And he's proclaiming it. Ecclesiastes chapter 5, verses 1 through 5. Salvation is of the capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D. Jehovah saves Jesus. There is an Old Testament prophet proclaiming that God Jehovah saves and only God Jehovah. But you're going to trace your family roots back to Abram, not Abraham, and proclaim Allah? Sorry. So God hearing this man in hell. And you wonder what that vow is. Now, knowing man and hearing stories from other preachers and people, I believe that could be a vow of a battlefield vow. Oh, Lord, you kept me out of this. I'll go to Nineveh. You got my attention. Lord, you get me out of this predicament. I'll be a preacher like my mama wanted me to be. And the Lord spank onto the fish. I need to see God... Uh, Come here, well. Yeah, Lord. And it vomited out Jonah upon the dry dry land. God speaks first to the whale, then Jonah. All right. I don't know what name he gave the whale or anything like that, but uh, that meal I just gave you a little while ago, yeah, vomited up. It was good, Lord. No. No, Lord, he's already going through my intestine. No. You know what that whale did when God spoke to him? 
Blech. You ever notice how when animals react to God, they do it instantly? The donkey, he's being mistreated by his owner. They're walking out. The Lord opens his mouth. And he starts saying to what the Lord wants him to say. Jesus walks up to a donkey has never been written before. Gets on. Okay, let's go for a little walk. Nice little walk. You can't do that with donkeys. Uh, some ravens? Yeah, I got a prophet who needs to be fed. There's some bread and food over there. You just take it to him right now without eating it. Do you realize in 27 verses so far in Jonah, the only one that has obeyed God is the fish. Or the second time, if 17, God spoke to that fish and said, swallow that. No, 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 not the octopus, that right there. Take that piece of meat right there. That's your meal. Okay. And then verse 10 of chapter 2, all right, vomit out. Then you got two places in 27 chapters that an animal has listened more than man. Because when you go back to chapter 1, Look where it starts off. Verse 1. Now the word of the Lord came unto Jonah, son of Amenitai, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry against it, for the wickedness has come up before me. But Jonah rose to flee. Well, Jonah tells the seamen, Well, if you throw me overboard, what do they try to do? They try to work. We're going to save his soul. We're going to save his soul. Well, there's a meal for you. Oh, okay. Thank you. Well, spit them out. And Jonah's on dry land. And it's quite interesting to me that I know what humans are. They're stupid. You know why? You know, I, I can say that. I can biblically say that. The most stupidest animal in the world is a sheep, and God says, You're sheep. Why God did not die for dogs, I don't know, and throw cats into hell. You can call a dog and a dog will be loyal. A dog will wait at your front door until you get home. And when you get home, if you're late, no matter what, he'll be wagging his tail. A dog will protect you and your family at all costs and even to death. There have been dogs who had laid at a master's grave and died on that grave where the master was buried. There have been dogs who have gone in to find people and buildings have been bombed. I mean, dogs are just loyal. What? I don't know why God didn't choose a dog and then made the dog an unclean animal. And there are other animals out there that, that would be just as better than human. All kinds of animals in the Bible, they do exactly what they're, they're told to by God. Look at Noah. Read me anywhere it says no one went and got those animals. But here they come, husband and wife, lining all up the gangplank. And the only more than male and female animals that went into that ark on their own by God's direction were the ones that were clean. Now how did that happen? And all mankind of the population of the world at that time saw and heard this man preach about this ark and something that has never had happened called rain. And they see all these animals lying up and walking into that ark and they still don't get right. The animals got saved over more than the population of man. And the Bible records those things about those animals. Dogs and cats, especially cats, do not go to heaven. I don't care what you call the title. Only animals I see in heaven are representation of the cherubim. And I know we come down on horses, but I don't think we go back in horses. This whale who's a type of death and tomb of Jonah, obeys God. So when you put my body in the tomb, 
because I'm a child of God. You can bury my body if I go before the rapture. That grave is not going to keep me. One day God's going to say, okay, vomit it out. Release it. Let it go. The grave cannot hold me. Now do you see why more Jonah died? Listen, you better not. Please do not. If any case, I have passed out or I have become unconscious, don't put me in a tomb. Don't bury me alive. See how stupid it sounds? Jonah stayed alive. How many live people have you buried lately? Anything in cases like that has happened. It's happened accidentally. So, faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God, TV, videos, and all that. Just throw them in the garbage can. Pick up your Bible and see what God has to say.